Countdown. Yep. Okay, three, two, one, go. Smurf. Smurf. Alright, so this is gun gunman's proof, gunpool gunman's proof, also known as Gunpuru Gunman's Proof. It's actually as uh, a long intro cutscene, right? It's like three Yeah, so I'm running the any percent category, which is obviously the fastest category. First thing about this game is it's got a four minute, 42 second unskippable intro. So it's kind of like a good thing and a bad thing. Um, the nice part about it is you don't have to mash through text at the beginning, but you are forced to sit through this long cutscene at the beginning of each run. So usually in a non-marathon setting, I'll get up and do something else for a bit and come back and start the run. But if you're resetting a lot when you're running this game, it can get kind of annoying. Also, uh, as soon as you take control of the character, there are a couple triggers that you have to do in order to exit town and truly start playing the game. So really, you don't exit town until about seven and a half minutes in. So once we take control of the character, we have to go over to the parents' house talk to them, that's one cutscene, and then we have to go across town, talk to the neighborhood girl named Sarah, and that's another cutscene, and then finally we can truly start playing the game, but we gotta wait a few minutes for that. So I don't, I don't know where we're at on the timer, but we're looking at about seven and a half minutes here. That's fine. Oh. So what's this game about? Is it like, uh... As far as the story is... goes for this game, it's a pretty awful one. Um, uh oh yeah, it, the story's kind of silly. It's basically, I was hoping I wouldn't even explain this for the for the marathon, but I'll go into it. <laughs> it's okay if it's if it's bad, it makes it even better. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, so you take place in the what is it like the late 1800 Midwest America, something like that, cowboy times, and yeah, um, yeah. And uh, an alien comes down, the main alien, the evil boss of the game, just invades and uh, takes control over every, like all the animal wildlife and possesses them and turns them into evil creatures. And then there are space sheriffs after him, these two guys right here. I f actually forget their name. These are two space sheriffs, and then uh, there's actually a third space sheriff as well. We'll meet him later. And what happens is one of the uh, alien space sheriffs possess your body, so you're actually technically playing as the alien space sheriff in this game and not the boy that you're seeing right now. But we have to go out and take out all the bosses that uh, the alien outlaw possessed. That's the main premise of the game. But yeah, this game is like pretty much unknown because it was only released in Japan. And uh, it was actually released the same month as Final Fantasy VII. So it was a completely overlooked game. Released uh, at the very end of the Super Famicom's lifespan. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. And, yeah, and then the development company went completely under after this game was released. <laughs> So there's like, uh, okay. there aren't very many cartridges uh, for this game, and the game's pretty expensive if you look online for a, for a cart of this game. I was lucky enough to get one, though. Actually, I think I've gotten like a few of them, and I've given a couple away. But yeah, uh, as soon as I take control of the character, you'll notice that it's basically like A Link to the Past, except with guns, as Blunt mentioned earlier. And it sort of has like an Earthbound skin to it. Maybe there's something more comparable, but I always just think of A Link to the Past with guns with an Earthbound skin. Yeah, I was going to say, this is like Earthbound, except 100 years ago. Yeah. Like prior. Exactly. Rolling back! The, the prequel. Rolling it. So yeah, we finally Rolling took control back, of the yes. character. I guess I can go over a little bit of tech of this game, just like what the controls are. Um, D-pad's movement. 
Uh, you want to use as much diagonal movement as possible when you're running. Uh, you can only mash text with A, which is something kind of interesting, unlike Link to the Past where you just mash all the buttons. And I can, I kind of prefer it that way, you literally can only mash with A, so I'm just like lazily mashing A instead of, uh, I don't know, you see some other runners when they're mashing through text just going crazy on the controller. <laughs> and I want to do that anyway, so I'm kind of glad that you can only use A for mashing. Um, a is also shoot. B is crawling, which is hardly useful in the game, but I do it quite a bit. Uh, y is to punch. We haven't unlocked our punch yet. And X is for bombs, which we haven't gotten any bombs yet. And the L and R buttons both strafe, which is a very useful mechanic when doing combat in this game. The first time I played this game, I didn't strafe at all, and it was actually... It actually made, makes the game way more difficult if you're not strafing during combat. So that's something I'll be doing a lot is uh, strafing while shooting. So this cutscene, basically we get the pistol, our little pea shooter. Pew. And yeah, our dad Pew. just decks us twice as well. And on the second time we fly right out of the house. So yeah, abusive. Pew. Sounds like uh, 19th century America to me. Yep, this is pretty accurate. Not 19th century sounds like present day. Oh, yeah, well, right. I mean, I went I mean in, I went in your household. <laughs> in your household, Dingo. America will never learn. <laughs> That's what happens. You throw a load of tea into a river, and then you've got people fighting in the streets. All goes downhill from there. Everyone's just Fun. slapping the shit out of them. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> is this allowed to be on Twitch? I mean... Yeah, okay, so a lot of people... It's a history lesson. Pretty much <laughs> anyone who sees a certain enemy character in this game has a comment about it, and uh, it's coming up here pretty soon. A lot of people think this game is highly racist, but I sort of look past that. Yeah, you just, just don't see color. Don't yeah. see color. That's how it works. Well, just play in monochrome. Those guys. <laughs> well, these guys look like they have blackface. I'll just say it now. Sure. Uh, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, okay. this one, these two, not so much. I think there's an enemy that's like has a purely black face with a different colored body. So we just got bombs there. That's going to be hugely beneficial for the run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, I never even thought of that. You say I never that. thought of it yeah, either that's, until someone else uh, mentioned it. Like, this game's racist. Mass. Why are you playing this game? No, it's, uh, they're purple. It's okay. Yeah, they're purple. They're basically Jinx. Yeah. Yeah. Post, like, it's after Mr. Jinx Popo. got changed. Yeah, because at first Jinx was also black. Yeah, it yeah. was, and then they, they changed it up. Okay, those guys right there have black bodies, though, so it makes them look a little bit worse, the ones that just passed. Instead of the purple body. So yeah, uh, in terms of running this game, the whole thing is basically just a boss rush. Like, there are some locked rooms occasionally, but we just run straight through the dungeon, straight to the boss for the most part. So it's basically just like overworld travel, run through the dungeon as quickly as you can, get to the boss. Do some strafing for fun here. Did he like, just spank his ass? Yeah, some of the enemies spank your ass, and when actually oh. later I'm gonna do a death warp where I get uh, spanked, spanked to death. No wonder RPG played this warp pipe. Warp pipe. <laughs> yes, this is why <laughs> RPG loves this game. Dude, this game is awesome. What the fuck? <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, so the bombs are hugely important for boss fights, and I'm gonna try to do a quick kill here. Wow, well, rip. <laughs> Death War Pipe? Death War Pipe? <laughs> so I missed the second bomb, and then I even missed the third bomb, which, uh, that's gonna kill some time. <laughs> 
So if you don't use any bombs on this boss at all, it takes like five minutes to kill. <clears throat> so since I used three bombs instead of two just now, I'm gonna have to grab another bomb that's uh, a little bit out of the way, but it doesn't, it doesn't take too long to get, so no worries really. Blunt, did you get my uh, message? Yeah, that's why I said thanks for oh uh, earlier. I did. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Sorry, I didn't. Thanks, hear you. Jack. Yeah, thanks. thanks, Jack. Yeah, no problem, boy. No problem, Tingus. <laughs> did you send Blunt the the butt chug? Uh, no. Okay. Why not? I didn't ask for that anyway. Don't worry. Well, you're not a sub anyways, so you can yeah, see it. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'm going to remain not a sub because of that. <laughs> Nobody wants to support the marathon because they don't want to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, like, I'm surprised I haven't gouged my eyes off. Same. <laughs> so this is our companion, Robiton. He's another one of the space sheriffs that I mentioned earlier. Uh, he's stuck inside of a horse body, and we can actually summon him later as a... I have some friends like that. Yeah, as a, as a riding companion for fast travel. It's okay, Overfiend. We know you're just hype about this game, that's all. Hype! <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's an. I think we when we did the blind race, didn't we play on the? Ink, there's a English ROM pack, isn't there? Correct. Yeah. So, <clears throat> since this game was only released in Japan, if you want to play it on a cartridge, you have to play it in Japanese. But there is an English fan translation ROM hack out there, which uh, for anyone who doesn't speak Japanese, I think that's the way to go. I just realized I've muted. Grass, bitch. Roll him back in. Hi, Penelope. So, we do hey, Jordan. need money in this game. Uh, after each boss you kill, you can collect a bounty. And you can also pick up money from enemies as well. Uh, we're talking to the sheriff right now. He gives us uh, demi crest, and then we'll talk to this lady up here. We'll give us a bounty. <laughs> then we have to go to the gun shop where we're gonna get our machine gun upgrade. Because the pistol's not very good, so we want to upgrade as soon as we can. So you're going from pew pew to pew 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 pew! Exactly, yeah. Perfect. And uh, the way gun upgrades work in this game is you have to get the drop off an enemy. So I have to kill an enemy, hope, hope he drops a machine gun randomly, and then pick it up and use it from there. And it's got limited ammo. So this guy, first off, is going to offer us the machine gun, which we want. <clears throat> and then we have to make sure to select no on the second option, because that is the shotgun, which is a like the worst gun in the game, probably even worse than the. So the he's selling a gun to a child. Uh, what? I mean, he's selling uh, a gun to a minor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah Doesn't true. look like a minor to me, Jack. The child's Where's a his minor? pickaxe? Where's his? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Tingus. <clears throat> I did just take out a monster though, and the whole town is kind of aware of it. So they're like, "Yeah, give this guy a machine gun. Like he kill more monsters." And uh, only certain enemies can drop machine guns. All the enemies have different, like a different drop table, I guess. So that enemy I killed right out of town could have dropped one. He didn't. So now, like, I only have really one more uh, chance for a drop before this next boss. But if I don't get a machine gun until the beginning of the third dungeon, that's fine because I don't really need it in here. Pretty sure this is the only dungeon where there aren't any locked rooms. 
uh, where I'm forced to do combat in order to progress so I can just run straight through this dungeon. <clears throat> and I don't need a machine gun for the boss either because he's just dead with one bomb pretty much. Hmm. Okay, I lied. There is one room where I need to do combat coming up, but it's it's not much uh, slower with with just pistol. <clears throat> so I'm at two life right now entering this boss. You actually want to kill each boss with as little of life left as possible. It's opposite of a link to the past in that regard. Because it like counts down your remaining life after the end of each level. That makes it even better. Yep. <clears throat> so I'll take <sighs> <clears throat> All right, forgot to grab my uh, extra bomb there. Went to throw a bomb, and I had nothing. <laughs> so this, this is gonna waste some time here. <clears throat> I need uh, now I need to, him to send out uh, gold ants so I can get a machine gun drop. Wait, did you not have the bomb? <clears throat> I forgot I used uh, three bombs on the boss, the first boss, and then so oh. I didn't have any bombs, and I forgot to grab the extra bomb. Just a good marathon mistake there. God damn it, Overfiend. <laughs> Fucking Overfiend. Alright, so here are the gold ants. These guys can drop machine guns, which I really need them to right now. Yo, I'm digging that. <clears throat> that, that boss's uh, outfit. That's <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> I want it. Yeah, it's and good. again, I only have the level one pistols, so it's like, damn. <laughs> I'm doing next to no damage. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this boss you can kill like pretty much instantly if you have a, a bomb, which kind of dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> no one gonna do it. Okay, good inch. <laughs> See what you did there. Oh yeah. Just too late. Just too late. Hmm. So, as I mentioned earlier, I'm running the any percent category. Uh, there is uh, like four categories. This is the main category that most people run when people do run this game. It doesn't get a lot of action speedrunning wise these days but um there's also a really fun category the deathless category and that's basically the legacy category before the glitch was found for this game uh, i'll be doing there is one glitch in this in this speedrun where i skip a dungeon and i'll talk a little bit more about that when i come up to it it's going to be after this next dungeon i'll be doing the glitch But uh, right now, oh. we have to go talk to uh, a samurai brother. He's going to teach us how to punch. There's a big boulder blocking our way to the next dungeon, so... That is how we will pass it. And uh, right now, since I just beat another dungeon, I could go back to town, collect a bounty, uh, pick up some more weapon upgrades, 
but really the only uh, weapon upgrade that's any useful that's useful at all is the machine gun upgrade that you can get from the gun shop at least there is a magnum pistol that you can find in a dungeon and that's overall the best weapon that you can get oh yeah magnums <laughs> Alright, so we want to kill some enemies here for some bomb drops. We're hoping to have three bombs entering the, the boss of this dungeon. Sometimes you get none, sometimes you get no machine gun drops, no bomb drops, and then you have to reload the final room before the boss and just hope for drops. We don't want to have to do that. Okay, there's one. This is one of the longer dungeons. This dungeon and the next dungeon are probably the, the two longest, I would say. There's a, a pistol upgrade in this dungeon, but it's just not worth it. It's too far out of the way, and it's not really strong enough to even consider going for. So, out of machine gun. I believe there's just one locked room left that I have to clear, so uh, if the room goes perfectly, I'll get a machine gun drop and two bomb drops in that room. And if I don't get any drops at all, I'm going to have to exit the room and reload the room. Hey, blonde buddy, can you check messages? Yeah, give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay. There's right, one bomb. Just need a machine gun now. Alright, cool. So that wasn't too bad. Yeah, sorry, Overfiend. <laughs> So what's the story behind these dungeons? Like, why do they exist? <laughs> Good question. No idea. Oh. Is there no English translation of this game? There, there is. Um, I just missed that kill. There, there is an English uh, translation, but I don't think it really goes into that. It's just like, hey. Now you're going to these dungeons to kill these bosses. Not, not so much why. Okay, so I'm gonna set up a death warp now. So I need to die four times. I've already. That's my. Ooh, we're gonna death warp pipe. Death warp pipe. Death pipe. Yeah. So after death we do the pipe. glitch, uh, we do like a sequence break and skip to part of the map that we shouldn't have access to. Um, and the only way to leave that part of the map once you get there, because we don't have flippers yet, is to death warp out. And the way this game works with lives is you have stock lives. So I was at times four stock lives a moment ago, and now I'm at zero. So if I take one more death, then uh, it'll be a game over, and I'll go to the game over screen. So right now I just want to put it so I'm at as little lives as possible to set up for that death warp. I'm fighting Trinex. Yeah, yeah, and this boss looks just like Trinex. He's got the fire and ice thing going. And uh, when we enter the last dungeon, you'll notice it looks exactly like the beginning of Ganon's Tower. So I'll point that out when we get to it. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna set up for a death warp here. The death warp. Death warp pipe? Death warp pipe. Get hype over, Fiend. Great! Oh, 
like a nice uh fucking pelican fucking yeah. yes <laughs> bodying me oh he's got bombs I've... whoa yeah we, so we just want to get hit by his body and not the bombs otherwise we'll catch on fire and uh there's an animation where it takes a little bit longer to take damage so fire it up that's where a little bit quicker that way Because deaths don't really do, they don't, they're not like any, they're not negative, they just warp you to the town. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yep, uh, no repercussions in any way other than uh, losing where you're at in the game. Oh, okay. Basically just uh, transports you over, over to the town, that's really it. And you get some uh, more stock lives back, so... So now we're at uh, two lives, so we're going to have to die two more times in the next dungeon here. But uh, that's what the money I just got was for, by that cross. There's a ghost up here that we need to uh, pass. He's blocking the way. We can only pass him if we have that cross. And then uh, once we talk to this ghost, we're going to... Try to do this glitch here and skip uh, the fourth dungeon. And this glitch saves about five minutes because it skips an entire dungeon. And this is one of the harder dungeons casually too. It's a massive maze. It's coming up, uh, Ghost Town. Yeah, I remember this one on my playthrough. It was <laughs> it's a hard one, one of the worst. One yeah. of the worst dungeons. You just gotta get lucky and go the right way, pretty much. Yeah. But I forgot how you actually skip this dungeon, I don't even remember. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll explain the glitch after I do it. But after I do the glitch and we do the screen wrap, I'm gonna have to farm for one gold coin. All right, let's reload that. There we go, finally. All right, so you just have to take damage and pause on the same frame and it puts you in a glitch state. Then you bring up the map and for whatever reason you can do a screen wrap after that. So I don't really understand, it's really simple to do, but as far as understanding it, I don't really understand it. What the fuck? Uh, no. How did somebody find that? Uh, well, actually finding the glitch state part of the glitch was, um, pretty easy. Like, me and, uh, Zemi both found that, but then learning how to apply it, I have no idea how the person learned how to apply it to make it useful. Um, Alright, so we need one gold coin here. There's one death. We need to take one more death. And I could pick up machine gun, but I will be getting magnum in this dungeon, so it's like, uh... I don't really want to grab the machine gun because at that point I'll be locked into machine gun until I wait, use all the ammo for it. And when I pick up Magnum, I want to start using it immediately. So if these guys drop machine gun, I won't pick it up, but there's the gold coin that I needed. Now we're in the fifth dungeon after skipping the fourth dungeon. Hmm. <clears throat> this one's pretty straightforward like all the other dungeons, just know the pathing path and run straight to the boss for the most part. Uh, we are going to go slightly out of the way for the Magnum though, but it's 
Really not too far. And also we need some more money, so we're going to go out of the way. That guy that's blocking the door right there, we have to pay him three times, so we need a fair bit of money. One of the things that have changed the most in the speedrun is just the money routing. It's changed a lot over uh, over time. There were just like money chests that we didn't even know existed and had to time stuff to figure out what money route was the quickest because there are a few different money routes that are pretty similar speed. So we pay that guy 300, then 600, and then 1200, which will leave us with 500 left. And we need that 500 to pay for the flippers. And then after we get the flippers, money becomes completely useless in this game. Some rolling deep combat right there. Flawless stuff. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I was gonna say, what the hell? <laughs> Getting hit everywhere. Yeah. Just... Was, that, that was that what's intended? Not yeah, completely on deep. deep. All right, but now we have the Magnum, so we can pretty much one-shot everything. And then uh, after this dungeon, we get a bandana, which doubles our power and de defense, and then we can really one-shot everything. So there are like tons of different weapon upgrades you can get from that uh, that gun shop. There's like flamethrower, bazooka, uh, the shotgun that I mentioned earlier. We have a machine gun. And then there's like this ball and chain thing you can throw. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing anything, but the Magnum's better than all of them. So it's not really worth picking up anything else other than Magnum. Alright, so now we're on to this boss. It's like a big mecha... mecha dude. And we have a bomb this time, so that's nice. Yes! This is another one of those bosses. If you don't have a bomb, it takes quite a while. So we want to take uh, one death on this boss here. Now we're at zero stock lives, so no more dying, please. Otherwise, it's game over and we go back to the uh, to town. <laughs> that would be bad. That would waste a lot of time. You mentioned we're trying to give uh, give somebody some time, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's fine. I think we're behind schedule, but it's fine. All right. We're just trying to. The countdown runs at 4, and he gets awful work at 4. Or his run is at 4, 15, I think. So, it's fine if it's... It's not a big deal. We got filler stuff, too. Hmm. Alright. Just making sure that if I game over and lose 20 minutes, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. I'm sure. No, not it. Actually, we have a drop run after the next run, so we actually have time to fill still. Sweet. Who wants to see back to back gun pull runs? Hell yeah. <laughs> Nobody. 100% run. I assume there is a 100% run now, right? Yeah, so any percent, deathless, uh, low percent, and 100%. Ooh, low percent. What does low percent involve? So use the pea shooter the whole time, no bombs. It takes uh Oh, so what am I doing? Whoops. Um it takes longer than hundred hundred percent. I'm pretty sure. As it should. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the final boss, just like all the bosses for the most part, just take forever with uh, only the starter pistol. You do like no damage at all. Guys, in his own ass. Yep. And this is what I mentioned earlier, where you get your, where you die by way of ass banking. All right. So we had to death warp out of there because, well, one, it's quicker, and two, we can't exit that area of the, of the map anyway because we have to swim to access that part. And we don't yet have the flippers, which is what we're getting right now. So this cost 500. We left ourselves with 500. We picked up 11 bucks over the, the course of the way, so use that somewhere, maybe. That's like my most dreaded part of the game is swimming. Oh god. It's really Why awkward it? for me. You have to uh, hold down B and mash A, which I'm just... It's pretty. It's just awkward for me, I don't know why. So... What we're doing now is we have to talk to both Samurai Brothers because they each teach you half of the special uppercut Shoryuken looking thing. So we just talked to that one. And now we gotta go talk to the same Samurai Brother that we talked to earlier and he'll teach us the other half of it. And it's a pretty sweet move you can do. You like uh, do an uppercut up waterfalls. Yeah, I think this is where I got stuck in the game, too. This is I where I probably... When I... Uh, first time I played this game, it was in a blind race. The same as you. And, um... Yeah, I spent the most time at this part. By far. Probably over an hour just wandering around. Because I was just mashing through text, not really reading anything. Since it was a, since it was a race, you know? Yeah. I think I had to ask Zemi, like, hey, what do I do, man? I, I just don't know anymore. Alright, so now that we got the Shoryuken, we can access the sixth dungeon, Wood Tower. Big Wood Tower. Oh, yeah. But before we do that, we're going to get the red bandana, which, as I mentioned earlier, it doubles our attack and defense, so uh, let's just go fast. And even with the time that it takes to grab this, it's still quicker to grab it because of uh, the, the, just the doubling your attack makes you go a lot faster because there's still a few enemies that we need to fight. Sure you can. Yeah, like, uh, not grabbing that would add more time to boss fights alone than the time it takes to grab it, so we pick it up. I'm gonna grab three bombs here. We need two for the next boss and one for the final boss. Swag walking. Yep. Moon walking everywhere. Like real speed games do. Exactly. Yeah. Into the Big Wood Tower. Oh yeah, Big Wood. Deku Tree. Yep, Deku Tree 2.0 right here.
Alright, try to damage boost past this guy. He can fall off pretty easily um, when you try to damage boost through him. The big purple polyrath looking guy. Barney looking guy. I don't even know how to describe him. More blackface enemies for those who like that. <laughs> Play nobody. Yeah. Like I said though, I never even noticed that until um, someone pointed it out to me. Yeah, it's like um, when I was playing Zelda 2, there's these fucking enemies that look like clan members in one of the palaces. And oh, I never yeah. thought of that until someone fucking pointed it out to me. Except yeah, they, it, look, they look like grand wizards. Yeah, exactly. Someone always fucking <laughs> says something too. <laughs> Can always count on Twitch chat. Yeah. I intend to fight Twin Rova, cool. Alright, so we're fighting the, the two divas now. Mary and Sally. The ninja sisters. And this is one of the easiest fights in the game. Especially since I just got a powered up Magnum. It's pretty quickly. Oh, no. Oh my god. Alright, accidentally let go of my strafe button there. Okay, that was almost bad. Oh, I see. Shut the wall. So yeah, if you get fired up by the sisters at any point, that's just... It runs over. It's disgraced. And we will fight these two again in a uh, boss rush at the end of the game. Alright, so we saved Robiton after the very first dungeon. We haven't seen him since. Now what we want is a carrot drop from one of these four enemies outside this dungeon. And if we get a carrot, pick it up, and we summon Ro Ro uh, Robiton, and we can fast travel back to the town. So, fingers crossed for that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is like the big RNG part of the run, right? Yep. Yeah, a lot of RNG here. Oh, we got a carrot sweep. And uh, Robiton has a lot of different animations that he does when you summon him. My favorite being Sailor Robiton. It's basically Sailor Moon Robiton. Dude, that was a fucking quick carrot. Holy shit. Yeah, that was nice. And yeah, as you can see, it speeds us up quite a bit, so it makes getting back to town a lot easier, a lot quicker. And Why wouldn't would you take a death here normally? No, you wouldn't. It'd still be quicker to uh, run back to town, even if you don't get a care drop, as opposed to taking a death warp. Because okay. we, we also have more life at this point, so it'd take a while. Yeah, for all that life that's... to be taken away from us. Okay. Well, you have to die twice, right? Or and uh, I think at this point we'd have to die three or four times because you get a life after each dungeon as well. Oh, okay. So... Oh, I gotcha. Because we just uh, game overed, so we got two lives. And then I think, yeah, I think we'd have to die twice. Or three times. Three times, I think. So we have to watch this cutscene here. It's like, hey, you're doing great taking out all the, the demi bosses. Something like that. I, I totally forget what the lines are. <laughs> Go talk to Sarah. Trigger this cutscene. She's about to get snatched up.
This guy's name is Baron Alps. He's the boss of the next dungeon. It's probably my favorite boss fight coming up here. He's got three different phases, or, or four. Three or four. They're all pretty fun. And it's a lot of uh, just strafing and shooting, so. But now we're going to exit town, run to the seventh dungeon, and hope for another care drop. Sweet. Got one right away. See what animation we get. Oh, uh, same one. That's kind of disappointing. We'll see Robotown one more time. Yeah, just getting Robotown right there, right as you exit town, you can almost get all the way to the to the dungeon with him. Which is really convenient. And if you're on Robotown, you can't interact with anything, so you can't open up chests, you can't enter dungeons. So the timing for that is pretty perfect. And uh, the entrance to this dungeon looks exactly like Ganon's Tower. Pointing that out, sort of. Yeah, it does. That. <laughs> like you can tell, this game took a lot of influences from Link to the Past. The spikes in the floor too. So I believe this is this is the one dungeon where there aren't any locked rooms, so we just run straight upstairs to the boss. I think I do combat with one enemy uh, before I fight the boss. through that enemy. The hitbox is pretty weird. <clears throat> so yeah, we got this boss fight. Uh, after we take this boss out, it'll just automatically take us about to, back to town. So no real, no more real like overworld traveling after this. And then uh, we sit through a cutscene we have to get the super bomb so we can take out the final boss. And then we have to summon Robotan one more time so he can take us to the final area of the game that is only accessible if you warp there with Robotan. Yeah, this, uh, this game hasn't gotten a lot of speedrunning action as of late. Maybe I'll have to pick it up some more and play it. It's pretty good. Pretty good game. It's uh, just just the movement and the combat are really fun. As far as like just movement and combat goes. There's not a ton of speed tech in it, but uh, yeah, I'd just say it's a really fun game overall. This boss, boss's fight is a little tricky because you have to do really fa uh, fast diagonal strafes, which can be kind of hard to pull off sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I missed a lot of them, but that's okay. Got to time two bombs right there to take out his last phase. Barking it up. And then this phase is just a fake one. He doesn't actually fire at you or can do any damage.
<laughs> there's uh so there's actually in this dungeon there is a suit upgrade that you can get so you can double your attack again or double your defense again which is something you would pick up in 100% you would pick up the double attack but it's at the complete opposite side of the dungeon so it's not even worth going after in any way but you do get a like a pal you do get like a palette swap on your just a color palette swap on your clothes which is kind of cool And I got the chest slide, no chest turn. Chest slide? They don't yeah, have chest you, turns. You can do you can sorta of do a chest turn in this game on one chest. But I only got the chest slide. Dang. Yeah, I'm sad about that. Yeah, we won't tell RPG. Yeah, don't just delete the VOD of this run after it's over. All right. Don't let him watch it. No upload to YouTube for this round. <laughs> so yeah, we just took out the last boss of the game. Uh, last, the penultimate boss, if you will. And um, we just sit through a cutscene here. And at this point, they all know it's like not actually the boy. It's the alien that's controlling the boy. And they're like, hey, we found the secret hideout of Demi, which is the name of the main boss. You gotta go take him out. And yeah, I'm probably gonna be like... If I had to guess, probably about three minutes overestimate right now. Just because of some uh, mistakes were made. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, change the estimate to 101 if you want. Oh, no, no, I'll leave it at 58. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't mind going over the estimate, I'm just pointing that out. I was wondering, I was like... Hey, I was wondering if how close you were going to be, because I know you got the... The last dungeon still. Yeah, I think there's like about seven minutes left in the run. That's fine. So we gotta talk to this spaceship dude. He gives us hints throughout the game uh, if we need them. But right now he's giving us an upgrade. And uh, the upgrade will allow us to warp to the last area with Roboton. So this is the main RNG part of the run. We need a carrot. There are five enemies on the screen. If none of them drop carrots, we have to reload the screen and hope for a carrot drop. All right, so no carrot. And a uh, carrot drop is 25% chance. What the heck, Blunt Bunny? We need all the carrots? Yeah. Damn it, Blunt Bunny. All right, we got one. Sprinkles is spinning all the carrots. So yeah, it prompts us with an option there. Would we like to warp or not? And we choose yes. This is the final area of the game. And now we go into the boss rush. So I believe we fight the first boss, second boss. Um, third boss and the sixth boss. So a few bosses get left out. Hmm. Um, all of the bosses have a twist on them besides this boss really doesn't pretty much exactly the same as when you fight him at the beginning of the game It's a pretty good game. I recommend trying it. Yeah. 
Shoutouts to Ryan. I actually know him. He's a friend of mine. Uh, I used to uh, work with him. He's a good dude. Cool. For former coworker of mine. Can't wait for this guy to die in one hit with a better gun. Oops, I forgot to even go for the quick kill. Damn. Oh well. So if you do a uh, sure you can, if you time it right and you're in the right location on that first phase, then uh, you can make it so he doesn't even shoot out the flames. And he just dies instantly. And uh, it saves like five seconds, but that's alright. Nice. All right, so now we're back to Trinex. He's got like a metal makeover though. At least when you fall in this game, you don't get fucking sent to the spot you entered the room. Yeah, um I just realized that in, now. In Wood Tower, if you fall though, you drop you drop down to uh the floor below. Uh so it's kind of it kind of varies. It's mostly nice though to you. Did I not kill him? Wow. Alright, definitely delete this VOD. No. Okay, whew. Uh, <laughs> that turned come into on. Disaster. So you're, um, what's supposed to happen is I'm supposed to just stand in this corner and fire and it's supposed to be free, but somehow I messed it up. <laughs> I was just ma I was mashing too slow, I guess. Oh, nice Twitch Prime sub, Victor. Roll, man. Sub hype. Yeah, I told Ryan I'd give him a shout out, and uh, glad I remembered too, or else I would have felt bad. Alright, so this can potentially be the most disgraceful part of the run. Uh, if you get fired up at all, your run's just like, what are you even doing? Fire up. Alright, looks like we're safe. Oh. Alright, <laughs> we made it. So that was the last boss fight of the boss rush. And move on to the final boss of the game. We got one bomb in reserve here. When's time again on this? Looking pretty good. Uh, time is. <sighs> How do no. I describe it? Um, it's as soon as I pick up the final zeal coin, which is the red, like the red ball, after the boss is dead. And I like start throwing my hands up in the air and celebrating and stuff. That's when you split. Yeah, that's when that's when it's time. Well, well, actually, it's basically the way I do it now. I didn't always do it this way. I like move off to the side of the room and just like let go of the controller. And as soon as um, the character starts moving towards the zeal coin to pick it up, that's when you split because that's when you huh. lose control of the character. Okay. Yeah, just do that and I'll split. Okay. When you uh, split for the start of the run, uh, I thought didn't you go off like the time my time I was giving you though? Or yeah, I just I I did no I I started when you confirmed the file name. Okay, so you were watching and then it split. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I just didn't remember when you started time. That makes sense. Really? Yeah, so I'll be, I'll let you know. I'll be like just facing to the left, like off to the side. Like, okay. And then my character will start moving to the right on its own. Okay. That's what it'll look like. 
And as soon as he starts moving. So yeah, here's the final boss, Demi. Uh, we just threw the super bomb at him. That made him vulnerable, I guess, to attacks. Uh, he's got it three different phases here. Uh, this first phase, we just take out his hands. And then the second phase, we're going to do the same thing, though it's a tiny bit different. He's got a nice Pokeballs for arms there. It's pretty sweet. Actually, look kind of like GS balls if anyone's familiar with those. I am. <laughs> I nice, am. Very, very nice, very nice. I actually am. <laughs> Alright, so now it's just the head. We're gonna throw a bomb, try to take this guy out as quickly as possible. Hopefully before he spins around the room. That's when we wanna when we wanna take him out. That's how we know we got like a really fast kill on him. Because he'll cycle to the left and right, and then he'll spin around the room. Uh, that's one spin, that means the fight was a little bit slow, but that's fine. One spin is still pretty quick. Alright, so I'm just mashing through some text. I'm just standing here, and as soon as I start moving it's time. And that would be time right there on my on my end. Okay. It's time blow, buddy. It's time for time. <laughs> 101.32. Nice. Nice. Yeah, definitely a few minutes of mistakes were made, but that's that's totally fine. Uh, super that... rusty at this game, but I love playing it and glad I got to run it for the marathon. Yeah, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Well, the oh, yeah, thank you. I'm psyched I was able to participate, and uh, I hope the rest of the marathon goes well. I'm, I'm psyched for the Dragon Ball Z runs that are, I think, tomorrow. Good luck, All right, man. and uh, good job hosting this marathon here in um, RPG's absence, Blunt, Blunt Bunny. Yeah, thanks.